Hi, intuitive viewers. Welcome. Welcome to a new series. Um, welcome to uh, my near death experience, um, a message of hope. And my co host in this endeavor is Kevin, the healing medium. It's his brainchild, actually. And um, so say hello, Kevin. Hi, everybody. Hi, Kim. Hi, Holly. So excited hello. to be here. We're, this has been, yeah. Um, I think it was a, a natural collaboration um, that organically came together. And we were just talking with Holly um, and we're really excited. It just feels really timely. So thanks for, for being a part of it. Yes. I want to introduce you to Holly and Holly has a, a story to tell, uh, an NDE story to tell. And we're going to, um, glean as much as we can from her story and learn as much as we can. Um, and Kevin and I will kind of be tapping in using our, our abilities to ask, hopefully ask the right questions and, and understand what, um, what this is all about. And hopefully um, give us all a little bit of hope and a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of uh, excitement about the now and what we're doing here and uh and for our lives to come and to, um, yeah, to give us, give us that hope. So Holly, can you tell us a little bit about um, who you were, what you were doing before you had this kind of life-changing experience? Okay. Um, so this isn't a story I tell people because it, it doesn't fit into most situations. Uh, or relationships, uh, but you asked, and I, I'm a fan of both of yours. So, um, before this, I'm I'm from California, but my people were Iowa farmers, and mm -hmm. farmers are very calm about life and death. Uh, you have livestock. You have you no. Know, there's a lot of death that occurs in that. Right. So even when they came out here, I absorbed that. My grandmother was a midwife. We did, she did herbal medicine cures for everything. I watched my mother see my grandmother out of life and I saw my mother out. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that I didn't, it's just I had no idea that we had any power in the situation or anything to say. Mm -hmm. um, I thought death just happens and boom, that's it. And, you know, everybody, everybody dies. So um, I wasn't really expecting anything. Of course, this was a situ an unexpected situation. It happened half my lifetime ago. And uh, I was on a little vacation uh, with friends. I got sick. They took me to a, a clinic and uh, I was given penicillin. And it turns out I am hugely allergic to penicillin. Oh, gosh. And uh, so this was you know, complete, complete surprise. Um, do you want me to just keep talking? Yeah, just keep talking. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, We're riveted. Of yeah, course. Yes. Totally. You've got our attention. <laughs> so I don't remember the part about getting into the hospital and this and that. I, I was, I was out of it by then. They, fortunately, I had people around who took care of me. But um, suddenly I'm, sitting on the floor, a kind of the sense of being about the size of a toddler. Mm -hmm. And I'm surrounded by, in my mind, adults, tall adults, and I'm completely safe the way a toddler would be safe surrounded by big people. And um, except I, I was aware that I was just this little kind of fuzzy thing, not a, not a human baby, just a little bunch of something or another it looked kind of like fog and um so i'm sitting there looking up at all these big forms around me and i start to become aware that this is you know something has happened and uh there they were all wearing i could see their feet and they were all wearing robes there were 12 of them i remember and the robes were kind of like cloud kind of grayish clouds and they just went up 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 and then if I looked way up I could see that there were faces up there and they were all looking down at me they were all smiling um 
And I was completely loved and I was completely safe. There was nothing was going to happen to me. I had no fear, no harm, no, no pain, no distress, none, none of that. I was just someplace else. And I was the absolute beginner in the room. And uh, I don't remember that anybody was talking out loud, but I thought, what's happening? And uh, they again told me I was all right. Um, I'll talk about the feeling in a minute because that was the, the amazing part. But um, they told me I was all right, that I was at an early exit point and that I could decide later what I wanted to do about it. And um, I, I seemed to understand none of that was confusing to me it be now, but it was not confusing to me then. Um, and uh, they kind of reached down and touched me and I was that the the image that's always used I was a drop of water in the ocean I was part of everything there's no separation everything is everything and here I was back home um, so I knew that nothing that happened would be a problem from then um, so they they kind of they kind of lifted me up and absorbed me and just kind of let me feel it for a while so that I knew that there was there was nothing going wrong. They also listened to me. They they wanted to know how I was. They wanted to know what I thought. This is not a powerless experience. That's the main thing that I I want to convey. You are a co-creator of this experience that you will have one day. We will all have this experience. It's not done to you. It is done with you. Mm. And um, this sounds weird, but you will love it. You will. You have never been this loved. Mm. Um, you have never been this safe. You have never been this taken care of in your life. This is what we're meant to be. Okay. So, so this, this happened three times over the course of, I think, a couple of days. Um, and then they just kind of let me rest. And I think I was exhausted. Then I had an, uh, apparently I learned later, another near-death experience. Um, and this time they said, um, let me, let us show you what it would be if you decide to stay with us. And so they put me into a, a classroom, the kind of classroom you have in grade school. Mm -hmm. um, with the, the smaller desks and the blackboard in front of the room and all that stuff. And they said, um, you'll be here learning. This is your particular classroom. This was apparently what I expected or wanted to see because I, I knew I was creating this. Mm -hmm. And um, they showed me a list of the things that I would work on. They said, you'll, you'll decide this while you're here. But they showed me a partial list and there were four or five things on there. And I told you guys, I saw the word patience on there, which is just painful. But um, um, there were a lot of there were a lot of words, actually, now that I think of it, there were a lot of words that I could pick out and decisions that we would make while I was there. Mm -hmm. And then I would come back. So they left me in this room and I immediately. Um, decided I didn't want to stay in the room and I went outside and there was a meadow and I went out and played. I was kind of a child at this point. Went out and played in the meadow. Then I came back in the room and I looked at the words. Uh, you know, didn't really want to do that. <laughs> went back out. So I spent a day just <laughs> playing back and forth, um, but getting a feel for it. And there were a lot of books. There was a lot of information available and research and this and that for me. Um, and then I went back, to the, I came back to my body. And then the third time um, I was with the people again and they said, what do you wanna do? And I said, I wanna stay in life because I have things still to do. And they said, that's no problem. And then they gave me a really interesting tutorial on what had happened to me and what I would have to do to heal. So they gave me an entire rundown, like 
down through my body of exactly what was wrong, what did, you know, what, what was the damage, what the path back was going to be so that I was prepared. And I said, okay, I can, I can do that. And they put me back and I woke up. So. Wow. And do you know what was happening um, in the physical while all of this was happening? Were you unconscious? Were you? I was unconscious. Yeah. You know, I woke up with the, the burned circles from the things on my chest. And, oh, right. Um, so they had to revive you in some way. Yeah. yeah. So, I, yeah, they, they said I, I died three times. You died. So they confirmed what I thought I saw. Um, and uh, so... Yeah. Um, but other than that, no, I had no, I, there was no fear, pain, concern. Um, I know some people see things in that room. I really didn't. I was just completely happy floating around with those people there. Yeah. And it sounds like, you know, no, no fear, no fear, which, you know, sitting as a person, you think, well, if you didn't know where you were and there's people around you and you, you, but, but, but you also had no brain too, right? You're, you're a, con- you're a consciousness, your brain is a physical thing and that's the fear thing. So you were, it sounds like you were with, without that, you didn't have the fight or flight thing that we have as human beings. So you were, you were okay. You knew you were okay. That, and they gave me a complete sense that I was in control. They were listening to me. Um, it was my event. It was my experience. So they said, you know, Here, here's your situation. You tell us what you want to do. So it was, um, that was the big surprise. It's not a, it's not a powerless thing. It's a, it's a co-creation. It was still my experience. So, um, and I, as far as I know, they would have done whatever I asked for to be comfortable and happy right. um, you know they read me they they gave me the room and the school thing and books and things that I would trust and like and feel comfortable with as a way to determine what I wanted to do about it right I'm, I'm sure for somebody else it would be an entirely different decision process but that's what they gave me Mm. So well, was, Kevin, I know you have, you have questions, Kevin. So I just, my, have? I mean, I'm I know. so <laughs> I know fascinated. Do we have four hours? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's so good, Holly. But I love in that so many things. One is that um, they're validating that we have free will in this humanness. We have free will. So in that, what I what I'm curious about is the communication. Can you explain or describe? Um, what the communication was. Was it a language? Was it a feeling? Was it telepathy? What was the communication that was happening? I heard it as words and as distinct voices. I could hear different voices speaking to me, but I don't think it was. I think it was just instantaneous thought transfer Mm. um, because I know there was no sound. I just heard sound inside and you guys are intuitive so you probably hear that regularly um it's just sound inside my head Um, it's interesting as you were talking i had wrote down heart to heart communication and so in the instantness of that now another thing that stands out is the child that they brought you back to um child um that infant the toddler i think is the word that you said are you do you have an understanding of why they brought you back to that um, so I was a small amount of matter, mm. you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of this much stuff sitting on the ground amongst all these huge pillars of clouds. Um, I don't know why I was that size. Um, I know I was bigger when the second time when I went to the classroom and the third time I was bigger still, I was kind of adult size not human form, but adult size. I knew, I knew my size and shape. I knew I was there. Um, So I don't know. Maybe that's how I needed to understand it. Mm -hmm. Everything else there was how I needed it. So probably that was some kind of communication to me, like, you know, 
this is how we take care of our babies. So this is how we take right. care of you. Yeah. I ha- it's one of the later questions that I have, but it feels fitting to ask you this now. Do you still feel like you discover layers to the meaning or the purpose of this oh, yeah. experience that you have? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, I, a few people in my life, as they've gotten closer to passing, I've told them when I've been told to tell them. Mm. Um, it seems to be a story to give them when they are ready to hear it. Yeah. Um, to to expect this, to know that you have a part to play. It's not being done to you. It's being done with you. And they will love you and respect you and make sure you're all right. Um, so... Yeah, I and each person I've had, I've only had to tell tell the story a few times, but each person has needed a different set, a different part of it mm. for them. So yeah. And that. Holly, how did it change you mm-hmm. the way that you just live your life? And I mean, because a, a lot of it, a lot of people live their life. Um, through fear because they fear death. And so they're very careful and they don't, you know, rock the boat and they live a little, do you, did you feel a little more free and a little more um, adventurous when you, when you got back? Um, So, well, adventurous in my terms, I'm not a kayaker, but (laughs) um, whitewater rafter, Um, but yeah, in my terms, Absolutely. Um, There's nothing really that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. No, Um, things will happen, but they're not, nothing really is going to go wrong. We are indestructible. We are all made of stuff that will, you know, that's been here and will be here. So I kind of have a sense of me as this little filament of light that comes off the fiber optic cable and We'll go back to the fiber optic cable and things will happen while I'm here, but it's okay. You can't really make a mistake. You can't really do it wrong. You can do things that you shouldn't, you know, you can do bad things, but you can't really do this wrong. It's okay. Um, And I'm not as hard on myself as I was. Um, I would get frantic about doing everything perfectly and, you know, everything has to be no, no, um, that's not really the point. The point is to to do it all, to experience everything, and then let it happen. I used to have to con- I was responsible for the outcome of everything in the universe, and uh, you no, know, I let that go. The universe has got this. It, it doesn't need me to run things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm much more. Oh, I know. I am much more likely than I ever was, and this is big for me, to let other people make their own mistakes. Oh, right. Um, All on our own journey, right? Right. I love you, and I wish you wouldn't do that, but I understand you have things to do. Right. Um, So I'm I'm, I'm probably much, much less bossy and and controlling (laughs) than I've than I was before this happened. Um, it's it's really, none of this is up to us. Wow. You know, what right. stands out from hearing your story, um, Holly, is how vivid the recollection is of the experience. And for that, I can just feel it like you're like that it just happened last week. And I think you said it's like half a lifetime ago um, at this point. So it was a um, significant amount of years in past. Um, Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Does it, does it feel like it's, um, why does it feel so vivid? I guess that's my question. Like what? Like As I'm telling it, I'm back there. I'm getting, I'm just yeah. getting high again off of the breathing. <laughs> I know I wasn't breathing, but breathing the air there. Um, they're right here. I can feel yeah. them. They're, they're touching me right there as we're talking. Yeah. Oh. Um, it's like I've got a hand on each shoulder, right? I got the chills. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, you, you can you feel too? you can feel them, can't you? Yeah. They're amazing. Yes. That's yeah. how much we're loved. Yeah. That's how much they love us. Yeah. They never they never leave. They don't leave you. They don't leave me. They're right there with us. We are, you know, we're a part of them. Um, so yeah, that's why it's so present right now. 
And I love how you use the word home when you describe going there, that you were home. Um, so clearly that love was just, it was, you could completely feel it inside, outside. Um, did you have an idea of who these beings were, who they were to you? Um, guides, friends, um, helpers? Like and and, and, and how time. long you'd known them? Did you feel familiar with them? Like Always. I should know you, but I don't, I don't exactly Always know. Always no, they weren't yeah. strangers. At the yeah. time I called them angels. Um, and I've always known them. They've always been part of me. Um, and I don't know why I never, I never asked them, what are you to me? Right. I just knew that they were there for me. And the, the human life is the, the, (laughs) the funny part, the aberration being there with them is, is the real, the real stuff. Right. So I, I don't know, but angels is what I call them. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so in this, in your, on, in your retell of the story, um, where was I going with this question? Um, mm, totally left my brain. <laughs> I'm so in, um, where was well, I? we were talking about her, about it feeling like home, right? And we were talking about it feeling like, um, she was kind of describing what what these beings were to her and, and, you know, angels, I, that is kind of the, the feeling that I get too is more an, angelic figures mm-hmm. than uh, I'm sure they are guides, but there's something interesting about when you describe them as very kind of tall, misty, almost mm-hmm. most figures. And I it did come to, at least to, to my, um, mine was it was an angels um angelic um did you did you have any religious beliefs before this happened did you have any kind of religious did you go to church did you believe in this stuff or did, was it kind of like the farm where you're just like when you're dead you're dead and that's that's that um my mother took us to whatever church we lived closest to so it didn't matter mm-hmm. um Okay. And I, uh, I had kind of played around. Um, my best friend was Jewish, so we went to temple. Um, I'm, I'm, I was baptized Methodist, but we mostly went to a Baptist church. Um, and she gave, she gave it, she gave us religious training for cultural literacy, not necessarily for spiritual. Um, she didn't, she didn't demand that we believed what we were hearing. She just wanted us to absorb it and have the information. Um, interesting woman. Um, <laughs> so, no, I, I'm, I think I would call myself spiritual, but not religious. Right. And uh, the experience I had, because it was my experience tailored for me, was spiritual, right. but not religious. I can easily imagine right. somebody who wanted to approach it through religion to have that religious experience um as i said they were it was all about me it was not done to me it was done with me right. um, they, I love they that. Cared, yeah they cared I, yeah. what i thought they cared how i felt they listened to me mm-hmm. whatever it was i said back i don't always re- entirely remember but um yeah um and the main the main angel who talked whose name i do remember the only name i remember is ariel oh, um, oh that is the angel yeah to ariel the the um you know really cared how i felt mm. not that they didn't know they already knew how i felt but they wanted me to know how i felt right and so they went at my pace You know, I could sit there until I was figured out that I was sitting there and looking at them and that really was happening. And then I really was in the classroom and I really did go outside to play and I really was making a decision. And uh, so they gave me the time, as much time as I needed. So 
I love that. And then that actually it triggered my memory as far as where I was going earlier. Um, that part about this is not a powerless experience. No. Um, it's not done to you. It's done with you. And in that, when you're retelling your story, um, it, I can feel it in this moment. And so I'm curious for you if it assists you um, when you think about it, when you do share, um, or even just because of the experience, how that brings you back to the present moment. Is that perhaps one of the gifts that came from the experience? Let's... Yes. Um, yes, they, they definitely opened it up and gave me access to all of it. After it was over and I said, I want to come back to, to life, uh, they didn't take any of it away. Um, they, let me, they let me have all of it. And that I thought that was this tremendous gift because yes. there's nothing to be afraid of. Um, when you when you close your eyes and die, you will be in this thrilling experience um, that will go on and on. Um, so yeah, that was a gift. Yeah. So it, I mean, it changes the language and the idea about death. And from it, I can tell that it's just another validation of life after life, you know, and yes. in that, I'm curious if it, if you revisit it. So you say you don't share the story too much. So I feel so honored that you're sharing it with Kim. And I, I know. I'm so, and, yes. Thank you and so then much. All these people, have you returned to it through your dreams is one of the questions that I had um, this morning that came through. Have you revisited or parts oh, of interesting. it? Interesting. Hmm. I'm not much of a dream person I don't normally remember dreams and when I when I do it's because I'm having some kind of panic about being my life being out of control and you know on um, those kinds of dreams um I don't think I have but I can as I'm talking to you right now I can with my eyes open I can see it wow. it's kind of like I never left mm. It's it's there all all the time, um, and uh, you know sometimes when everybody's the family's getting all crazy about something, I kind of know it doesn't really matter because if you know you balance it against what's real, mm. and then the other thing I, I I don't know if I said was that list whatever your list is that you came with is, is paramount importance. So I spend a lot of time trying to be sure that I'm honoring my list. Mm. And that's probably the hardest thing about all of this is I know there's a list. I know I, I'm here to try to do things. You know, what am I for? What did I, what, did, what am I trying to do? What's left on my list? Now I know these are not the thoughts I probably should be having, but that's, that's kind of still me. Um, I'm still trying to check off things on my list. Um, you know, could I be more patient here? Could I be more kind? Could I, could I help more? Could I share more? Could I take a different view of this? Um, could I, all that. And Holly, you, so some people, you know, when they have an experience like this, immediately they want to share it with everybody. They write a book, they put it out there. It's, 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 do, did you, did you kind of, again, and I always felt like, I don't know if I'd feel that way because I've had some experiences that I've never shared because they're sacred to me. I don't want, it's almost like I want to keep, I want to hold it inside. Is that what you wrote too? I wrote this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if that is one reason why you, you didn't just open up and share it with her because you kind of felt it was a sacred personal experience that you wanted to hold for you. Is that, is that part of it? That's part of it. Um, another thing, Another thing I learned, thank you, Kim. Another thing I learned is to pay more attention to what I know. I knew it wasn't the time to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I knew that there were some things that were going to happen late in my life. And some of what I was for wasn't going to happen till late in my life. And patience, thank you, patience. Um, 
just to wait for it. Mm. And it was funny because I would, I had done my usual, am I, am I doing, you know, am I honoring what I'm here for? Um, and then I saw your notice that you wanted. And so, and all of a sudden it was time to say, wow. to tell oh, the wow. story. <laughs> so um, I'd never, never been tempted before. Um, and uh, I mean, I, you know, I've said a few words, but you know, like I know there's more, but it was, it's time now. Yeah. I feel that too. I feel that too. And I'm, um, I think that, um, uh, like I said, there's something about the times now that I, um, we've kind of been confronted with, with, with a lot of death, like never before. I mean, a, a worldwide pandemic that, opens up a lot of people to what ha- what actually does happen after we're we're not here anymore even people that weren't curious before um, when it comes so close to home it really does open up all of these um all of these questions and I think I think you're right I think it's time and were you going to say something Kevin sorry yeah it's just on the to echo that part about the sacredness and as I feel into it it's um what stands out Holly from your share is the deep knowing that surpasses the beliefs that we have in this humanness. And in that there's such comfort and hope that I can't imagine how it's just enhanced your life in every way. And in that, I love the, I'm going to put, this is my words around it. The restraint of just, you know, shouting it from the rooftop um, and that recognizing now is the right time to be in the um, in the sharing and in the communication of it, and for that, that gives me hope. Just it, just feeling into that energy. So I'd be curious if there's um, a message or messages of hope that you would have for people that have not had a near death experience, but um, what you would say around hope that could potentially um, give them that without the NDE. That's it. That's so interesting because as you said that i realized something about my whole life since then thank you kevin um i worked in human services and people would come and talk to me and then they would they would say you're so calm i feel so so much better talking to you you've given me hope and it, i don't think it was so much what i did as maybe what i was given what i experienced um that maybe I was allowed to transmit some of that. So for the next million years that I worked after that, um, I heard that over and over and over again. Um, So it's the thing about hope is it's, it's not, it's not a doing thing. It's a knowing thing. Mm. Um, The, the beings that are in charge, the being, the beings, the, the universe, however you see it, will not hurt us. We're here for an experience, and the experience is good and bad and rough and betrayal and hurt and the things that happen to us. But it, it's in the end, it's not going to hurt us. They're going to give us what we need so that we become what we're supposed to become, what we want to become. Each of us drives it. Um, You know what you want to become or some some form of you, some high form of you knows what you want to become and what you need. And you will get that. And in the end, these loving arms will take you back and tell you you did a good job and hold you until you're ready to go again. and maybe that's why I saw myself as a child. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's so great. The um, um, the reminder that we're just so connected. And I'm thinking about like, because I'm curious about um, if it would have happened to me, um, if I would want to share. And it's just so hypothetical. But in that um 
I feel like the impact without the communication is still occurring. For example, how you just shared how people just, you know, being in your energy, I've just, I've known you literally for what, just, just shy of an hour. And in that, I can just feel such love from you. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, it, it radiates. And so in that, um, sometimes we don't need all the words to be um, impacted by love. And so for that, again, it just gives me such hope. It gives me such hope. And it was curious, I had pulled, I had shared this earlier with you both about the um, card that I pulled, and it was the evolution card. And it says, you realize that obstacles are merely lessons on your path to love. And I mean, <laughs> it's just perfect. Yeah. It's <laughs> so perfect. perfect. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Holly, thank you. I cannot thank you enough for being our first guest on our first show. <laughs> and I think, where do we go from here? I know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But Holly, there are lots of stories. So I'm sure you'll pull them in. I, yeah. I, any, I hope so. Yeah. Any go final ahead. words, Holly, that you'd like to share with our, our listeners, the viewers? I, I think you two reached out and found me and, uh, you know, told me it's time to tell my story. And I thank you. This has been a wonderful experience. I appreciate it. It's been so good for me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kevin. And we'll be on <sighs> Kevin's channel next. And um, I can't wait. And thank you again, Holly, so much for doing this. We really appreciate it. So wonderful. Thank yes. You. And if anybody would like to share their near death experience story with um, Kim and I, um, we would invite you to reach out. You can find us through our emails. Um, and Holly, again, oh my gosh, if this doesn't make you feel something. And I mean, if you can't draw a sense of hope from it, my goodness, life changing. <laughs> life changing. Exactly. So good. Thank you. All right. so good. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. We'll see you next time. Bye.